Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and as always told, out of voice radio. So today, we're going to be having a look at an extremely exciting new Snorlax card, which is going to be coming out in the Pokemon trading card game in Unbroken Bonds. Ladies and gentlemen, I adore Snorlax. I think Snorlax is absolutely brilliant as a Pokemon. He was my original second favorite Pokemon. I love him. But the reason he's getting his own video today very early on in our look at Double Blaze is not because I love him personally. It is because this is an extremely exciting card indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, I like this one. So starting off then, it's Snorlax. And because it's Snorlax, we know he's a big boy. He has got 150 HP, which is frankly huge for a basic Pokemon. No, it's not quite as big as Regigigas, but it's not that far off of Regigigas, if I'm honest with you. And the great news is you've got a retreat cost of four here, which means you actually get access to buff padding, which means you can actually have 200 HP. 200 HP on a basic Pokemon is just phenomenal. Now, I know it's got a bad weakness. I know something like Boswell will run right through this. And I know that with Pikachu and Zekron being probably the best Pokemon in standard at the moment, and having a weakness to fighting, that is going to make other people want to play fighting. Nothing we can really do about that. But you'll probably be all right. And of course, being a colorless Pokemon, no extra tricks, etc. But look at the artwork. Look at the artwork, ladies and gentlemen. This is one of the best pieces of artwork I have seen on a Pokemon card in a long time. And it's also worth pointing out, this is actually the very first card the illustrator has drawn since the Dedenne that came around in generations. It's been years since we had a new card drawn by this person. It was worth the wait. But what does it actually do? Well, our translation here comes from the lovely David Hockman over at LiminousTCG.com slash translations. And the ability is the adorably named Snacking. Heal 10 damage from this Pokemon between turns. Now that sounds... fine. Until you realize that it's 10 damage after your turn, 10 damage after their turn, and then 10 damage after your turn, and then 10 damage after their turn. And then 10 damage after your turn, 10 damage after their turn, etc, etc, etc. And essentially, oh, my Snorlax is about to be KO'd. Let's just pop him on the bench for a few turns. Think like what we used to do when everybody was playing Rough Seas. That stadium that once during your turn healed 30 damage from all of your lightning or water Pokemon. And this is not far off that. I mean, it actually works out probably about the same... Uh, maybe a little bit less. But the point is, it's still pretty dash darn good. Because you just retreat to the bench. And I know retreating sucks, right? Because you've got a retreat cost of four. But I don't know, Guzma or whatever it is. Get to the bench somehow. And just leave yourself on the bench. Heal 10 damage between turns. And unless your opponent Guzmas you back up. Or is able to hit the bench. You're going to sit there and then go back. You've got 150 HP. You can use buff padding to go up to 200, and then you're healing 10 damage between turns. This is not going to be an easy Pokemon to KO if you're not one hit KOing it. And if you're wasting your resources trying to take down my bench Snorlax, which only gives up one prize, incidentally, I'm going to be feeling pretty good about that. But just healing isn't enough, unless you're playing a stalling deck, which in which case I suppose it might be. What we really need is an attack here, and we have one. Free colorless energy, 60 damage. But if your opponent's active Pokemon is a tag team GX, this attack does 120 more damage. 180 for free energy to a tag team GX. Now, one of my big regrets with this card straight off the bat, you can't use triple acceleration energy. That is free colorless energy, but it can only be attached to an evolved Pokemon. This is not an evolved Pokemon. This is a basic Pokemon. I would adore it if you could, but you can't gut it. But having said that, it's not like this is the most difficult Pokemon ever to get energy onto. You can use double colorless energy. That's going to help a little bit. And then, of course, 
You're a colorless Pokemon. This can be popped into a Malamar deck, and you can accelerate energy. This can be popped into something like a Magnezone deck, and you can accelerate energy. This, you could, in theory, use it with Kiawe, but I think it's probably much better to use it with the new card Welder. Attach two fire energy from your hand to one of your Pokemon and draw three cards. And then you attach for your turn and it's rolling. So yes, it is an expensive attack and no, you can't use triple boost energy. Triple acceleration energy, I get that wrong a few times. But you can use double colorless and you can use Malamar and you can use Welder. And actually, I don't think we're particularly struggling here. I think we're doing absolutely fine. I think we're getting the energy on just as quickly and easily as we need to. The biggest downside of this attack really, and this is going to sound dumb all right, but I assure you it's true. It only does 180. And I know that doing 180 for free energy on a basic non-GX Pokemon is great. And I know that calling it the biggest downside that it only does 180 probably sounds a bit dumb. I get that. But here's the thing. The weakest tag team GXs are ones like Pikachu and Zekrom that have 240 HP. And actually, 180 damage is just not that close. Now, you'll get there, but it takes a bit of work. So you've got Choice Band. Choice Band gets you from 180 to 210. And that's cool. It's not quite enough. Shrine of Punishment then gets you from 210 to 220. It's cool, but it's not quite enough. But you can use Tapu Koko to spread damage to all your opponent's Pokemon, and then it is enough. You can just leave Shrine of Punishment out for a couple of turns, and then it is enough. Or you can use Professor Kakui to do an extra 20 damage, and then it is enough. Or you can use the new Incineroar, which means all your Pokemon's attacks do 30 more to the active, and then it is enough. You can get up to one-hit KOs on Tag Team GXs here. Not saying it's easy. Not saying it's going to happen all the time. I'm, in fact, explicitly saying that it's going to be difficult and you're not going to be pulling it off constantly. But I don't think that really matters. Because there are going to be plenty of times where you can pull this off. And look, if you're dedicated to getting the one-hit KO here, you're going to get the one-hit KO. If you work to make it happen, you absolutely can work to make it happen. It's just going to take a little bit of effort on your part. But here's the thing. You're a non-GX Pokemon. You give up one prize. It's for free energy, which as we've shown is not that difficult to get on there. And you're taking free prizes off a tag team GX in a single attack. Even if your opponent immediately KOs you back, you're trading three prizes for one. So yes, I think it is worth putting a little bit of extra effort in here to make sure that you get this out and get this rolling. Make no mistake about it, this is a very, very good attack. But it's only good against Tag Team GXs. Against a non-Tag Team GX, you're doing 60 damage for free energy. Now, on the one hand, that will give you a one-hit KO against evolving Pokemon like Zorua. On the other hand, it's 60 damage for free energy. No! There are much more efficient uses of our energy. So Snorlax has a niche here. You pop it into a deck like Malamar or a deck playing Welder. And if a Tag Team GX comes out, you use it to do redonk damage for very little energy. Then you pop it on the bench and let it recover. You can use this, incidentally, as a stalling Pokemon. Use it like something like Regigigas, except to get four Snorlax out, and every time they take a hit, just put them to the bench to heal, and just keep going with that. You'll end up having to waste Roller a bunch of them anyway, as you always do with these healing decks. But let's say you've got four Snorlax, maybe two of them end up getting Ace Roller, and the other two get to just heal normally using the ability. Incidentally, the ability is on a basic, so Lola Muck will turn it off. But cross your fingers, they're not playing it. And yeah, it's got a bad weakness. But it's got a really good ability, and it's got a great attack that's great against Tag Team GXs. Frankly, ladies and gentlemen, I love this Snorlax. I'm giving it four Wossies. And again, this is one of those Pokemon I love, so maybe this ends up being a little bit generous. But the fact of the matter is, you can heal yourself completely by just going to the bench and waiting a couple turns. And you can do 180 for free energy. Those are good things. No, it's not good against non-tag team GXs. But the good news is, have a look at the format in Japan right now. 
It's all Tag Team GXs. Have a look at the format in North America and Europe at the moment. Okay, it's pretty much just Pikachu and Zekrom. But that's a Tag Team GX. We can work with this, ladies and gentlemen. We can work with it. But I'd like to know how and if you intend working with it. So please do let me know in the comment section. Go nuts. But please do remember the rule. Be nice, would you? And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wassy, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash PTCG Radio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all of that, head on over to patreon.com slash PTCG Radio, where you can do exactly that. And do please make sure you're checking out youtube.com slash Wassy Plays for some more Wassy action. But by far the most important thing as always... Look after yourselves till next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.